data. Data is simple. Data is all about the most basic details. So first, we're going to go back to the days when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and we're going to talk about the 1990s and software, and a lens that I was based on some projects I worked on there that helped me ultimately create Seller Tracker. But hopefully, by seeing how I got there, you'll uh, maybe you can do it for yourself. So here we are, 1990s, word processors, presentation graphics software, features, 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 word versus word perfect. We made widgets. That's all we did. And it was great. We would actually go out, we would sit over people's shoulders and watch them word process and ask them questions. Once I actually got to visit a customer, and I saw that about every two seconds, he would do something. He was pressing Control S. Turns out this poor guy crashed a hundred times a day, constantly. Software used to crash incessantly. We renamed what they were. UAEs, GPFs, illegal operations, all the same thing, utter failure. Happened in 1999, I was actually ready to leave Microsoft. An amazing guy, Steven Sanofsky, talked me down on the cl off the cliff and said, hey, I want you to start a new tiny team, use the internet to bring office closer to customers. And the thing we focused on was eliminating software failure. First dialogue that ever said sorry from Microsoft. You've probably all seen it. The underlying technique was actually remarkably simple. We came up with a way to categorize software crashes. What was, the, what was the application that was crashing? What was its version? What code was it crashing in, its version, and sort of the exact line? We got a bunch of patents, cool geeky stuff. So you send it up the wire, and then the magic happens. You are voting for your crash. And it turns out not all crashes are created equal. We didn't know how it was going to turn out. We prayed it would be 80-20, where the top 20% of the defects would be 80% of the failures. It was better than that. The top 1% was 70% of the failures in every piece of software we ever plugged this into. Instant ROI. Part of why the project succeeded, though, was we were unbelievably focused about exactly what we were going to do and not going to do. I got tested on this the very first time I got to present to uh, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer. I was supposed to have 20 minutes to talk about this. Things went sideways. I had 60 seconds. I banged the table. I said, two words, crashes suck. And I had their attention, and that kicked off six years. OK, I'm falling behind. So changing topics, wine. Who can remember when terror was having a huge wine list dumped on a table in front of you? As a guy, utterly, completely scary. Didn't know about wine, on a date. My first really positive experience with wine was actually just bicycling through Tuscany, a very simple wine tasting one night. Chianti, Chianti Classico Reserva, a Vino Nobile, and a Brunello. I didn't know anything about wine. All I remembered was four things that should be the same were completely distinct. I was hooked, completely in love. I get home from Tuscany. I'm going to learn about wine. I'm going to collect. Um, actually, it took me a few years. But the best advice I got was two words, pay attention. Someone basically told me, write stuff down and kind of keep track of it. So I was doing that in a spreadsheet. It's kind of unsatisfying. I was pretty nerdy about the kind of information I wanted to track. And so fast forward a few years, I finally had a little bit of time. This was in the middle of working on all this crash stuff. And over the course of two weeks on a sabbatical, um, I went and I made Seller Tracker for me. Just really raw tool. Showed it to two friends and they said, I want to use it. And I got them on there and then I realized, oh my, three people could be 300 or 3,000. There was something there. The underlying approach is actually very, very similar to the crash stuff. Instead of crash buckets, you've got wine buckets. We came up with a way to catalog wines. I'm not going to read off all the different fields. You can go to Seller Tracker and see them. But the basic notion is that every unique combination of a few different parameters, and every wine in the world can be squeezed into this, comes up with a way to catalog it. Each wine gets its own ID, and then all of the information, a whole lot of it private, how many bottles do I have in my cellar, what did I pay, where am I storing them, when did I consume them, and then the public stuff. What did I think of them, when should people drink them, etc. They're all hanging off the same record. Unbelievably simple. It gets a little messier because the joy of wine is some of the details. So let's take Gaia Spurs. It's really two wines in the grand scheme. It used to be a Barolo, and well, there's a little Barbera, so suddenly it's Longue Nebbiolo because it can't be bottled as Barolo anymore. So two different wines. Or Andrew Wilsorella, if you know Washington State. Same wine for 20 years, same vineyard, everything. And we had to come up with a way to stitch those together. OK, so the core focusing thing on this is, if you have a hammer, the world looks like a nail. I was a guy who built productivity software for 13, 14 years. Just did that for wine. Just keep track of my stuff. 
300,000 plus collectors, 1.8 million wines, 53 million bottles, and constantly growing. One of the key things, just like crashes suck, I knew what I could do, I knew what I couldn't do. I knew about software and information. I don't know how to sell stuff. Selling is hard. I'm sure a lot of you guys know how to do it. I'm petrified of it. So this is Switzerland. This is neutral. We are, it's just information. Stay away from anything that's actually real. Now, the only surprise, by the way, over the last 10 years was we did make it so people could post tasting notes. And in 2005, right at the beginning of that curve, when there were 20,000 notes, I looked at my traffic for the first time, and I found that every day, half the people on the site weren't even registered. Now that's about 95% of the better part of a million visitors a month, 5 million notes in total, and still growing. So a word on tasting notes. A lot of words here from some guy um, in Maryland. Um, um, maybe not so tolerant. OK, the challenge of wine, the challenge of tasting notes, and, and where it's relevant to this talk is the notion that if you have huge amounts of information, some of it is relevant to some people, and some of it's completely irrelevant, and vice versa. And so here we go, duck muck. This is labeled SAE 50W70, motor oil. Like, if you read the words, some people may sound, like the sound of the first wine. Some people may like the sound of this. No Nobody's wrong. It's all about what you like. Our challenge is going to be to help shape the data to the consumer of that data so they get what they like. Coolest trend going right now, Favino, delectable, actually wine glass and app where you can take a picture of a wine list and it'll OCR you through each wine. The use of these things and the camera as an acquisition tool is finally letting wine reach beyond a million a month, but reach many millions, which is fantastic. The only thing that chills me about this is, if you've seen Trading Places, you know the scene, sell, Mortimer, sell. It seems like every digital tool wants me to join a wine club, buy this, buy that, recommend it. I don't need more wine offers every day. Again, this is me. I don't know how to sell stuff. It's just information. And in the lower left, there's a bunch of companies that are either out of business or, or maybe heading there. So what do we all need to do? Data, simple, details. Every winery in the world should have a website, no flash. Okay, just a list of their wines, Appalachians and their varieties. If you have the same wine in different markets, different names, put that there. And by the way, if you could do label images and UPCs and cool SEO, great, but just a list of the wines. And why is it that a $3 box of cake mix can do UPC perfectly, but wine at 1000 bucks a bottle insists on using the same UPC vintage over vintage over vintage as if they're exactly the same product. They are different products. We are bungling data. Again, Data simple. So where do we go? Clean, simple data. This enables, whether it's Seller Tracker, Vivino, or the next 20 amazing things that are to come along and help float our boat, data done well is going to help let more people into this wonderful world of wine. And we are very, very early in what is, I think, a very big shift that's going to continue to happen over the next 20 to 30 years. Thank you. Thank you.